Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson on foundations necessary to express robot motion. I'm Dr. Maddie Babayaso from Mecarodom and I'm more than honored to be your instructor today with another lesson to help you strengthen your knowledge in your path to learn robotics. In the previous lesson, we learned about Euler angles, which is one of the ways to explicitly represent an orientation. This lesson will continue with explicit ways to represent an orientation, and we will learn about rho PGA angles. Please bear with me to the end of the video because there are great examples and demonstrations at the end. Also, please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so. We'd love to have you as part of our family because you're so important to us. And it's the best feeling in the world to see that you progress every single day towards your goal to master robotics. As always, this lesson has a reading version on the website that complements it. Watch the video first and read the reading for a deeper understanding. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. In the previous lesson, we learned about Euler angles. And we saw that Euler angles refer to the angles in a sequence of rotations relative to the body fixed frame. Roll PGI angles, on the other hand, are a sequence of rotations about the space frame axes. If you want to know more information about the space frame and the body frame, please refer to the lesson on Introduction to Configurations. Visualize roll PGI angles as a sequence of rotations relative to the space frame as you see in this figure. The body frame is initially coincident with the space frame, so it starts from the identity rotation because they have the same orientation, so the rotation matrix representing the orientation of one frame to the other is equal to identity. Then following XYZ roll PGI angles, it first goes through a rotation about the space frame's x-axis by gamma, followed by a rotation about the space frame's y-axis by beta, and finally, a rotation about the space frame z-axis by alpha. After going through these rotations, the final orientation can be expressed by a successive multiplication of the rotation operators, as you see in this equation. Note the order in which the rotation operators are written. Because they are successive rotations about the fixed frame axes, they are written from right to left. The result of the product of the three rotations is exactly the same as that for the ZYX Euler angles, but they have totally different physical interpretations. ZYX Euler angles, as we saw in the previous lesson, are a sequence of rotations relative to the body frame, whereas the XYZ roll PGI angles are a sequence of rotations relative to the fixed frame. The terms roll, peach, and yaw are traditionally used to describe the rotational motion of a ship or an aircraft where the roll is considered to be in the forward motion direction the pitch is in the direction of the wing and the yaw is towards the ground or maybe upwards. You can visualize roll PGI rotations as you can see in the simulation. Same terminology is used in robotics. For instance, in industrial robots, the end effector's orientation can be obtained by a combination of the roll PGI angles. For instance, for the spherical wrist that you see here, which is very common in six-axis industrial robots and constitutes the fourth, fifth, and sixth joints, with the axis of rotation of these three joints intersect at one point, known as the wrist center, the rolled PGI angles can be defined 
as you can see in this figure. Please note that the distinguishing factor of the spherical wrist is that the three axes of rotation of the joints intersect at one point, whereas this is not the case for non-spherical wrists. For instance, in this figure, KUKA KR robot has a spherical wrist, since all the last three joint, joint axes intersect at one point, but the UBO I5 has a non-spherical wrist, since the joint axes don't intersect at a point. Roll PCI angles are not only used in robotic manipulators to represent the wrist's orientation, but are also used in mobile robotics. They can also be used in aerial robotics like drones to represent the orientation of these robots. Now let's solve the inverse problem. Suppose that we have an orientation expressed with the rotation matrix R as R equal to its individual entries. And we want to find the set of roll PCI angles that can represent this orientation. Using the same approach that we used in the previous lesson, we should equate the rotation matrix obtained from the successive multiplication of the rotation operators to the given orientation expressed by the rotation matrix R. From the first two elements of the first column, we can find an expression for cosine beta, and from the third element of the first row, we can find an expression for sine beta. If cosine beta is not equal to zero, and thus beta is not equal to 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees, then using the expressions for sine beta and cosine beta, we can find two values for beta. Then alpha and gamma can be easily found using these equations. Now let's solve the old PGI angles for a given rotation matrix when cosine beta is equal to zero and thus beta is equal to 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees. When beta is equal to 90 degrees, inserting the value for beta in the expression for the rotation matrix from the old PGI angles and then equating it to the given uh, orientation expressed by the rotation matrix R, we get this equation. From this equation, it's easy to see that the element in the third row and first column is minus one, and the difference between gamma and alpha can be found using either of these equations. One possible solution is when alpha is equal to zero and gamma can be calculated using one of the equations. Case 2 is when um, beta is equal to minus 90 degrees. Then inserting the value for beta in the expression for the rotation uh, matrix from the rotation operators of the old PGI angles and then equating it to the given rotation matrix, we will get this equation. And from this equation, it's easy to see that the element in the third row and first column is equal to 1 and the and alpha plus gamma can be found using either of these equations. The, again, one possible solution is when alpha is equal to zero and gamma can be found using either of the equations. Beta is equal to 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees is the singularity of the XYZ roll PGI angles representation for big SO3, meaning that there are infinitely many sets of roll PGI angles for a given rotation matrix as th at those angles. This is problematic in practical applications where the robot's controller will be confused at those configurations and can generate solutions that can cause problems. The inverse solution discussed here for the XYZ roll PGI angles is the same as the inverse solution for the ZYX Euler angles that we discussed in the previous lesson. Although the results are the same, the two have totally different physical interpretations. Now let's see an example for the inverse problem. Suppose the representation of an orientation is given by a rotation matrix R, and we want to find the equivalent sets of roll PGI angles that can represent this orientation. 
from the uh, equations that we saw in the previous slides, we can find the values for cosine beta and sine beta. Because we have two expressions for cosine beta, uh, we would have two solutions. If cosine beta is positive, then alpha would be in the first quadrant and equal to 38 degrees, beta would be in the fourth quadrant and it would be minus 40 degrees, and gamma would be in the third quadrant and equal to 220 degrees. If cosine beta is negative, then uh, we can find expressions for alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha would be on the third quadrant, beta would be on the third quadrant again, and gamma would be on the first quadrant. So two sets of x, y, zero PGI angles will result in the same orientation given by the rotation matrix R. Let's see this with a simulation. Okay, in this simulation, I want to show that um, the two sets of x, y, z row PGI angles will give us the same orientation. So I chose here the convention x, y, z, which means a rotation about the space frames x, followed by a rotation about the space frames y, followed by a rotation about the space frames z axis. So I chose that. Uh, I don't want to change these because these are for the translation. I'm only interested in the rotation. So I want to change that. And the first sets of angles are 220.76 about space frames x minus 40 degrees about space frames y and 38 degrees about space frame z. So the final orientation would look like this. Now let's go to zero orientation. And examine the second set of um, angles. The first angle is about space frames x, second one about y, and the last one is about z. So this is the final orientation again with these sets of uh, roll PGI angles, and you can see that the uh, both sets give the same orientation. Let's see a demonstration where we want to convert the orientation given by roll PGI angles to the equivalent Euler angles. Suppose that we have a remote controller with a known orientation given by the roll PGI angles. In practical applications, the orientation of an object can be measured using sensors such as a gyroscope. We want to make the control system of a robotic hand follow the orientation of the remote control. But the problem is that the orientation of the robotic hand is set using ZYZ Euler angles. We want to find the transformation that transforms the orientation of the remote control given by roll PGI angles to the Euler angles representation of the orientation of the robotic hand. The orientation of the remote control is given by roll PGI angles. Therefore, the desired orientation for the robotic hands controller can be calculated using the rotation matrix discussed in this lesson for roll PGI angles. Now using the inverse solution to the ZYZ Euler angles that we developed in the previous lesson, we can find the sets of ZYZ Euler angles, uh, of course for the singularity free case, for the orientation of the robotic hand given the orientation of the remote control. We would find two sets of solutions. As a numerical example, if the sensor attached to the remote control measures the orientation of the remote control approximately uh, as the roll PGI angles of 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 45 degrees, then in order for the robotic hand to follow this orientation, the ZYZ Euler angles using the equations that we just saw should be 
uh, about 11 degrees, 64 degrees, and 16 degrees. That's one set, and the other set would be 168 degrees, uh, minus 64 degrees, and one um, and minus 163 degrees. For your convenience, we wrote the MATLAB uh, code to calculate the same result. You can see that in our website. Now let's actually see that these sets of Euler angles will give the same orientation as the set of the rolled PGI angles representing the orientation of the remote. We'll see that with the simulation. Okay, let's actually see that the two sets of the Euler angles that we found will actually give the same orientation um, as the orientation given by the rolled PGI angles for the orientation of the remote. So first let's check the, uh, the orientation of the remote by rolled PGI angles. So I changed the rolled PGI angles to 30, 60, and 45 degrees. And this would be the orientation of the remote with these sets of roll PGI angles. Now let's go back to the zero orientation and check the first set of uh, ZYZ Euler angles. So I changed the convention to ZYZ Euler angles and let's examine the first set of ZYZ Euler angles. And 16.10, which will give the same orientation. And the second set of the Euler angles. we will get the same orientation. So two sets of uh, equivalent representations for the Euler angles will give the same orientation. So the robot's hand can follow the orientation of the remote with using either of the uh, Euler angles that we found. That's going to wrap up today's lesson. I hope that it gave you a good understanding about all PGI angles and how to use them to express an orientation. We'll continue with the orientation in the next lesson. And we'll see another representation to express an orientation that we call unit coternions. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and follow to be part of the Macarithm fam. We strive for excellence, but not perfection. So please excuse occasional typos and mistakes that you see in videos or in the writing. We'd also like to hear from you. Your suggestions and feedback are highly appreciated. It's our mission to make the hardest concepts fun and easy for you to understand. And we'd love to know if we are in the right path. Send us an email or leave us a comment. Write to us what field are you in and why you're interested in learning robotics. What difficulties do you feel in learning robotics and what is the most difficult concept for you? Thanks again for watching and best of luck in your path to master robotics and mechatronics. See you in the next video. Bye.